isn't just interrupting our everyday life. This is somebody that, I mean, we've been here, we've ate so many dinners here. Communities across the state of Tennessee are in disbelief after tornadoes ripped apart their neighborhoods, killing at least two dozen people in this state. From West Nashville to Morgan County, tornadoes ranging from powers as far as wind speed goes from 130 to 160 miles an hour, maybe up to a half a dozen tornadoes from that supercell system landed in parts of Tennessee particularly Middle Tennessee, and one base in particular we're standing in Cookville, just about an hour and a half west of Knoxville. The National Weather Service today saying an EF3 tornado hit here. Again, wind speeds of upwards of 130 to 160 miles an hour. This is just one example of that. This is the Bean's home behind me. There were four people inside that home. Mr. Bean was upstairs watching television, seeing these storms roll in when he knew it was time to get up and go to the basement. And he says the only reason he survived is because he made it downstairs. Those winds blew his house apart. Fortunately, he survived and he is one of the lucky ones. Let me run down some of the statistics we've been reporting on throughout the day. Again, at least 24 dead. 18 of those are in the Cookville area. This is a community of about 30,000 people. Tennessee Tech is located here. It's a manufacturing hub. In fact, Oric moved here after Hurricane Katrina to get away from disasters. They're headquartered here, at least part of their operations. Again, this is a state of emergency declared by the governor of Tennessee. These communities are in cleanup mode, but their focus is again on the victims. And we're gonna to get to them in just a minute, but for a scene setter in Nashville, also hard hit by another tornado, we turn now to NBC's Jay Gray. The sounds of recovery <laughs> echo across Middle Tennessee right now. We're here to support, you know, the people that got completely devastated. We're here to help. An army of volunteers gathering in areas that look like war zones, entire neighborhoods gone. What little that's left of homes and businesses ripped apart by the storm scattered for miles. For many who lost most everything, it's hard to know how or what to do next. I've cried a little bit. I'm, I'm numb. I'm shocked. Um, we, I don't, I just don't have enough words. Still, as they begin what's sure to be a long struggle to recover, most here understand they're the fortunate ones. So many people not only lost their homes, they lost their life. And, you know, this stuff can be replaced. We can't. At least 24 people died in the storms. And search and recovery teams are still working through debris. More than a dozen in the strike zone are still missing, while survivors search for a way to come back. We are an incredible community, and we're going to work together to rebuild and be even better than we were before. Before their lives and communities were torn apart. Now, the rebuilding can't start until the cleanup and recovery is over, an effort that clearly is going to take some time here. Jay Gray, NBC News, Nashville. Again, back live here, just on the outskirts of Cookville. I'm John Becker reporting. It is really the epicenter of this storm. We're going to have more on the cleanup efforts underway. But again, as I mentioned, the focus today is on the victims. And I want to return to one of my colleagues, Shannon Smith, who has been talking to people who knew people who died in this storm. Right, and John, like we talked about, the age range for the victims is very big, two years old to 67 years old, and a lot of those in the same family. So one family that I met up with today, the Curtis family, five of them were asleep in their house, only two made it out alive. When the news of the tornado broke, Parrish Burgess called her best friends. Hey, get a hold of us if you're okay. Tried calling them, cell phone stuff was down couldn't get in touch with them. When she found out the Curtis family home was destroyed by a tornado, she broke down. To think that they worked so hard for all of this their whole lives and it's just gone. Just it doesn't make sense, you know. Mom Jennifer and nine-year-old Easton Curtis are in the hospital, but okay. And he said as soon as he hit his mom's arms that she wrapped him up and he remembered the power going out. He remembers the roof blowing off. Father Terry, little brother Dawson, and nanny Amanda Cole were killed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dawson, 
Ben was, um, he was mean as a snake, but he was so sweet. <laughs> Family and friends like Burgess are now trying to salvage what they can and keep Terry Dawson and Amanda's memories alive. I just can't imagine how many people are hurting right now, you know, and it's not just us, and I know that, so. Back live here, that was Shannon Smith reporting. Again, emotions are raw. We are barely 36 hours after these storms hit in the middle of the night. That's what made it extra scary and extra dangerous for people because many were asleep in this community. They didn't hear their phones go off. Some got calls saying seek cover from friends who have been watching the news broadcast from Nashville, letting them know they needed to take shelter. That's how they found out. There is hope that is beginning to emerge from all this destruction. Again, my colleague Gabrielle Hayes joins us with more on the people that you've been talking to today. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, John. Uh, I spoke to a lot of people who've either lost their lives or are trying to, um, or know people who lost their lives or are trying to rebuild today. Uh, I spoke to one couple, they've been together for 29 years. Their house is gone. It's flattened. Uh, you can see in this video here, they were trying to get to their uh, hallway when um, the tornado hit. It flattened their home. They were able to make it out alive, but they do have bruises. Uh, they have a black eye. They have some scratches. However, they say they are grateful to have each other. Uh, they're picking up the pieces now, and they're just happy to be alive. I got to the hallway door, and I couldn't, I couldn't get out, it, it started right then. It hit the house, just like a train. They've had people out here all day, helping them pick up the pieces, finding everything from pictures uh, to, to kitchenware and their blankets. And they say those things matter because that is a part of their lives. And so at this point, again, they're just happy to be alive. Without a doubt, Gabrielle Hayes reporting tonight. Thanks. We'll hear more from you a little bit later in our newscast. We appreciate it, Gabrielle. We want to take you to another part of this community, and that is the Cookville Community Center, now a distribution center for supplies. People are coming forward with all kinds of items. They're going to stores or bringing things from their homes to ensure that people who don't have anything, who's lost everything, have something to gather now. They could use some more canned goods as well as some diapers. Volunteers have been working hard to ensure that those items get to people most in need. Got lots of volunteers, lots of folks wanting to give, um, bring things that they um, are, have purchased from different places and, and help us set up. But we've got lots of great volunteers and we'll always take more. And again, her students are helping out. She says they completed special disaster response training before those tornadoes unfolded. So the timing for them, very good. Again, back live here at what is the epicenter of one of the storm cells that dropped out of that super storm cell. We're in the path of a tornado. We'll show you a little bit more of this destruction in a moment. But first, volunteers from across this state and from as far away as Minnesota have made it here to help out the neighbors in this community. Grace King is reporting on that neighbor helping neighbor effort and all the volunteers pouring in to help. Yeah, and John, like you've mentioned, there's been a lot of loss here, but the people I talked to said this community are, is strong and that it's really bringing out the best in them as they all help to clean up. We all went to the closet and then I asked my daughter to start praying and she did. And before she could get done with her prayer, our house was gone. Eric Grooms is thankful to be alive. There was literally no walls, nothing around us, no roof, no walls. His house flattened. We looked up and there was nothing. But his family, okay. It was just like God said, no, you're not taking these today. These are mine. Now he's cleaning up what's left, like so many of his neighbors. Everything was gone. Um, all of our neighbors' houses were absolutely flattened. Amy Jennings turned her house into a refuge the night of the tornado. They were wet and they were cold and they were crying. Now she's helping her community clean up. It's been an awful day, but we can turn this into something good. Something good in the community she knows and loves. Tragedy usually brings out the best in people. It brings out hope, it brings out love, and that's kind of what we do, uh, especially in the South. 
Grace King reporting that story. One of the things that is most revealing and will show you the power of these storms is the before and after pictures. And for more context and perspective on that, we turn to our colleague Jim Matheny. All right, so for this comparison here is Knoxville. We're going to zoom in to Putnam County at Cookville. And basically this tornado cuts a path all along here just above US 70. And if we zoom into these subdivisions, take a look at this drone footage of this neighborhood that is absolutely leveled. You can clearly see the path where it plowed through all of these houses. And this short road with the cul-de-sac, this is Hensley Drive. Take a look at this Google Earth satellite image from the same angle before the storm, and you see all of these houses. These yards are mowed. And then if you zoom out just a little bit, you can see the public swimming pool just a couple of blocks away. And here's what that area all around the pool and all of these trees and houses look like after the tornado tore this area apart. And now if we go back and take another look at the houses in the other direction, this is a road called Charlton Square. You see everything is demolished. And this is a satellite photo from before the storm. Now from Cookville, let's go west until you get around 20 miles before Nashville. That is where a tornado hammered Mount Juliet. These shots you see right here are along Mount Juliet Road, just across the street from a middle school. And here's how this landscape looks from Google Earth. You see just businesses along the larger road and then a quiet residential neighborhood. Well, all of this area is now torn up. And here's a shot directly over a couple of houses. And here is a satellite image of those same houses before the storm. Then you see, you go back right here again. This is after the damage from those tornadoes. You get an idea basically of all the work it's going to take to clean up and rebuild. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Jim. We talked about there were tornadoes of different intensities from EF0 to EF3. And for more perspective on that, we're going to bring in Cassie Nall, our meteorologist who tracked those storms and also has a look at what the National Weather Service has been looking into today. Cassie. Thank you, John. Yes, so basically what the National Weather Service is doing is going out and surveying the damage that you just saw in that story and what you're seeing behind me here. And what they look for is the type of structure that it is or was, the damage that was done to those materials that originally constructed that structure, and also they look at the damage to vegetation. So let's talk about the EF scale that they use to rate these tornadoes. It's called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. Originally, the Fujita Scale came to fruition in the mid-1970s, and then in 2007, it was revamped, and that's why it's called the Enhanced Fujita Scale. So what it is is a way for the National Weather Service to assess the damage to vegetation and structures, and from that, along with radar data, they are able to give you an estimate of how strong the winds were in a tornado. Now, they go to the most highly damaged locations to get the maximum wind speeds associated with the tornadoes and they range from an EF0, which is kind of a weak tornado with winds of 65 to 85 miles per hour, all the way up to an EF5 with winds that can be greater than 200 miles per hour. That does incredible catastrophic damage and is considered a violent tornado. An EF4 and an EF5 are considered violent. As of this point in Cookville, the National Weather Service in Nashville has determined that they have found at least EF3 tornado damage in that community. That means that they found wind speeds of at least 136 to 165 miles per hour. So obviously what you've seen in the pictures and the videos here, widespread, very bad damage in that area. And they are continuing to try to access the worst hit areas. We'll have more information from them as we receive it. Back to you, John. Cassie, we appreciate it very much. Again, you have talked about the indiscriminate nature of tornadoes, and this is a perfect example. Remember the Beans home I showed you at the top of the broadcast? Again, destroyed by those winds from the EF3 tornado. Right across the driveway, this is the Myers home. How about that? They lost maybe two or three windows. Volunteers helped board them up, but they saw their water restored today. Barely any problems with their home. This community is in recovery mode right now, but they are certainly reflecting on the lives lost here. And as we had to break, we're remembering the victims of these storms in Putnam County.